Faith family, and welcome to the Friday edition. I know that sounds good to you of the Daily Connection. We're staying in the Word of God because we want the Word of God to stay in us. We want the Word of God to permeate every fiber of our being, transform us by the renewing of our minds. So we're wrapping up our focus on, no doubt, the assurance of God's love. And, and we're doing that with a challenge. And, and challenge really sounds like an understatement because what Jesus says here just absolutely runs contrary to everything we know of love from a worldly perspective. So let's get right into the text. John 15, start with what we're going to read, verse 13. No one has greater love than this, to lay down his life for his friends. So here we see Jesus saying, hey, the standard of agape, and of course that's the word love that's being used all through this John 15, 9 and following section is agape. No greater love. Agape can be, there's no way to, to understand love more fully than in someone making the greatest sacrifice possible, which is to lay down his life. Now, what's fascinating to me is that in this context, and possibly he's doing this because of who he's talking to, but, but in this context, he uses the phrase, lay down his life for his friends. But if we begin to look at texts that flow out of that later on, for instance, Paul's writings, John's writing, the Apostle John, who would have been here in this upper room listening to Jesus' discourse, we begin to see that that's, that level of sacrificial love doesn't just extend to friends. Uh, it also extends to enemies. Uh, it, it also extends to those who are part of the body of Christ, but maybe we're not even familiar with them. Uh, maybe, we don't, maybe we're not even aware of who they are, and yet we are called upon to demonstrate love. And, and that's one of the things I want to point out. I want to take us to two supplementary texts uh, that relate to this same concept of sacrificial love. You know, how we can be sure of God's love is that we're willing to sacrifice. We're willing to sacrifice lovingly. Look with me, first of all, in one of, uh, another one of our, our well-known um, verses in Romans 5. Uh, starting in verse 6, here, here Paul, building on that same idea, says this, For while we were still helpless, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For rarely will someone die for a just person, though for a good person, perhaps someone might even dare to die. Here's verse 8, But God proves, some translations say demonstrates, His own love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So back in John 15, 13, he said, you lay down your life for your friends. But here, clearly, Paul is saying, we know love in this. You know, we know love by this demonstration, that Christ died for the ungodly. Christ died for those that were not worthy of his death, that were not worthy of such a sacrifice. You know, and that's just, that's such a profound challenge because it really brings a depth and a perspective to love that oftentimes from a worldly view, it's not there. It's not demanded. This level of sacrifice is just not present in our culture. And yet Jesus implied it in John 15, 13. Paul explained it here in, John, in Romans chapter 5, verse 8. And then John goes a step further. You know, John the Apostle was there in the upper room. He would have been hearing the discourse. And in one of our famous 316s, and specifically John, 1 John 316, here's what he says about love. This is how we've come to know love. He laid down his life for us. We should also lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. So here again, we have a sacrificial element being attached to what genuine love is. Fortunately, in this context, John doesn't stop right there. John goes a step further and says, let's make practical application with this. And that's what we want to do. Verse 17, if anyone has the world's goods and sees a fellow believer in need, but withholds compassion from him, how does God's love reside in him? So yes, Jesus set the bar in saying that, uh, that, that you know, this is how we know love, that a man would lay down his life for his friends. And, and Paul comes back and explains that more, saying that we know love because God has demonstrated that love while we were still sinners. Christ died for us. And there's that, you know, that ultimate sacrifice being paid. But, but John comes and says, you know what, there's, there's even a more practical sacrifice that can be made as well. In that if we have the world's goods and we see our brother or sister, it says here, a fellow believers, what the CSB calls it, in need, and we withhold compassion, meaning we don't strive to meet that need, how does the love of God reside in us? How can we possibly 
have the assurance of God's love when we aren't even willing to demonstrate that love. And that's what I want you to understand, friends. If you want to live with the assurance of God's love, then you've got to live daily with the intentionality of demonstrating God's love. In some cases, that might mean that you withhold something like anger and frustration and, and outburst. In other cases, that means that you're going to, you know, give something. You, you're going to uh, surrender something, meaning, you know, if you have uh, goods, if you have a means of sat and meeting a need, then you're going to give that, as John says here in 1 John 3, 16. And we do that because it's the overflow and the outworking of the love of God that is in us. It's an affirmation that we truly have been born again and that we have the Holy Spirit living within us, producing the agape that was first demonstrated to us and then extended to us through Christ. And so we, if you want assurance of God's love, then you must be absolutely committed to demonstrating that love in a sacrificial manner, in, in a manner that's consistent with the compassion that Christ has shown us in meeting us where we were, dead in our sins and trespasses. Well, I know the challenge is great here, but we have the Holy Spirit to help us to meet that challenge and to abide by the demonstration that Jesus has made for us. And ultimately, when we demonstrate the love of God, it brings us the assurance that we indeed have God's love in us. I pray you're already making the commitment now to set aside any hindrances, any obstacles, any distractions to being together as the body this coming Sunday. It's a special time where we get together for fellowship, we get together for worship, we get together for edification through the Word of God, also your connect groups. Now, the connect group was never intended to be a supplement for corporate worship. The two, we need both. We need the large gathering, we need the small group, we need both. So, some of you are going to connect group and not coming to worship. Why would you do that? Why, why would you supplement? Why would you think one is okay over the other? That's not it. We need both. So make the commitment now to set aside and overcome any obstacles, any distractions, to be together in worship this Sunday so that we can celebrate Jesus, so that we can be transformed by the renewing of our minds through the study of his word, and so that we can make a commitment together that as we disperse from this campus, we're doing so with the purpose of living sent. <laughs>